formal title. But Vincent, uh, I know you're a professor of microbiology and immunology at Columbia University. Could you share a little bit more about your background uh, as we get ready to talk about coronavirus here this morning? Sure. Good morning, and thanks uh, for having me. So thanks for being here, man. Uh, my pleasure. I, I just love talking about viruses. Uh, <laughs> oh, I we think... love hearing about them, especially right now. <laughs> well, I think you eat love now because there's an outbreak, but I talk about them all the time, even when there aren't outbreaks, although I would argue that there's always an outbreak somewhere. So I'm a virologist. I have trained to do research on viruses way back in 1979. I got a PhD to work on uh, influenza viruses. Uh, then I did some more work on Polio viruses. I started a lab here at Columbia in 1982. We do research on viruses. We don't work on coronaviruses. But uh, I then wrote a virology textbook with a bunch of other authors. I've been, for the last 10, 12 years, been blogging about viruses. I do a podcast called This Week in Virology. So I've been thinking about all viruses and their impact on uh, life on Earth here. And so one of my favorite things to do in the past 10 years has been to try and explain viruses to anyone who will listen. So that's my background. I'm really, and I also teach a course here at Columbia, which I have to point out. This today is great, was, by the way. Irony time, everyone. Today was canceled because of the coronavirus outbreak. It's never happened in the 10 years I've been teaching it. The course will go on. You can you can find it over at YouTube. but. Um, I, I post all my lectures anyway, so the, the students will get exams, they'll get, they'll learn about viruses, and uh, many, many thousands of people uh, take virology through that course. So let's uh, talk about viruses. I'm happy all right. to be here. So all right. Vincent, well, uh, maybe start with some basic facts about coronavirus, uh, meaning what is it? Uh, what are the basic things we know about it? Uh, why does it make you sick? Not all viruses make people so sick. Just a few of the, the sort of basic groundwork of this virus and what we know. All right. So there are many viruses on the planet, more than anyone can imagine. Most of us, most of them don't affect us in any way. In fact, all three of us and everyone listening right now is infected with many different viruses and most of them are not having any effect on you. But we do know that a, a number of viruses that infect people do make us sick, and there are all kinds of ways they're transmitted, and there are all kinds of different diseases that they cause. The coronaviruses have been known to us for many years, and before these epidemic coronaviruses came to our attention, we knew about uh, a handful of coronaviruses that basically cause common colds, right? You're all aware of a common cold. It's an upper respiratory tract infection, typically sore throat, sniffles, maybe cough, never, rarely. Yeah, there you go. I have mine right now. Uh, Ty so Typically not serious. So th th many viruses do that. Rhinoviruses are the most common, but adenoviruses and coronaviruses can do it. So for many years, we knew about coronaviruses. They cause mild disease. Most people didn't know about them. There were a handful of people working on them, but they didn't get much attention. I called it, I've called it a cottage industry. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> in 2003, we have the emergence of SARS coronavirus starting in China, uh, spread to 29 countries, 8,000 infections, uh, quite a high mortality ratio. Uh, and that disappeared. That seemed to have originated in a bat. Uh, we were able to control that. So that was great. But it did point out to us that there are these viruses harbor, replicating or existing in bats in many parts of the world. Then, of course, in 2013, another coronavirus emerged uh, in the Middle East, MERS coronavirus, uh, which is with us to this day. It causes very short chains of infections. The reservoir appears to be camels, and they're very popular in that part of the world. The camels are all infected at birth. They get a respiratory disease, then they recover and they shed during that infectious period and they can transmit it to people. And those infections uh, don't last. They don't, the virus does not seem to establish itself as a human infection. So every time you hear of a case of MERS coronavirus, it's a brand new uh, infection from a camel. That's so amazing. Uh, I, I had heard of MERS 
but the idea that it's coming from camels uh, is not something I had known. And it's just, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of those things that if I wrote it in a novel, uh, that this this person and this character got sick from his camel, people would put the novel down. So uh, <laughs> truth is stranger than fiction. Well, you know, the, the reality is that every human virus that we have, that everyone knows about, let's say smallpox, polio virus, influenza virus, norovirus, at some point they all came from an animal, from a non-human animal, mm. uh, because they have been inhabiting Earth longer than we have. And uh, sometimes our ancestors got infected and passed it down. But in many cases, the burden of infection started when we began agriculture and people started to congregate in big numbers and we started keeping livestock. So for example, measles virus probably is a virus we got from cows when we first started growing them in large numbers. And when you, you know, grow animals, the handlers are close to them and they acquire their viruses. This happens to this day. And so this latest coronavirus, which emerged at the end of 2019, again, we uh, think, and there's some evidence, but it hasn't been proven yet. We think the origin is a bat uh, and it's spilled over into humans by contact with uh, uh, either bats or an intermediary animal. And now this one, in, in contrast to SARS and in contrast to MERS, is really spreading globally. And um, it's not going to go away like, like, like MERS does after very short chains of infections. And this, this is a more serious uh, infection than a common cold in many people, not in everyone. And we should talk about that. Uh, but it is a human virus now. It's got, it's got the ability to transmit from human to human very efficiently. And it's not the last time this will happen. Uh, this will happen again in the future. I don't know exactly when, but it will happen because with population, human population growing, there are more opportunities to interface with animals that harbor various viruses. It's not just bats, but other animals can harbor viruses and pass them on to us as well. And it will keep occurring unless uh, we do something about it. And I have to say, I think we could have been uh, ready for this. Maybe talk not, a little bit, if you could, about what we know about why coronavirus makes you sick. What is the mechanism? What is the effect? Um, why do people, some people ultimately uh, die from it? What's going on in the body with coronavirus? So I think it's important to understand that every virus has a different way of causing disease. So the coronavirus is a family of viruses. They have they can cause a similar respiratory disease. And then we have polioviruses, which target different tissues in us. So it's not that one virus can do it all. Viruses tend to be specialized. So coronaviruses are the ones that we're talking about these common cold ones and the, the epidemic ones, they're respiratory viruses, which means that you acquire them by inhaling uh, fine aerosols or particles, liquid particles that are containing virus. And when I'm talking here, I am emitting a stream of particles that could contain viruses if I'm infected with one. Uh, it turns out that speaking is a really good generator of such uh, particles. And then, of course, sneezing and and coughing. So the viruses, you would inhale, it would enter your nose, your upper respiratory tract. The viruses attach to the cells that line your uh, respiratory tract. The virus can enter them, multiply, produce more viruses. And those, of course, will be shed. And then as you talk and sneeze, they're expelled. But then within you, the viruses, the coronaviruses that are the, the current one especially, can spread down into the lower respiratory tract, of course, going down uh, the, the trachea, eventually even reaching the very termini of the lung, the alveoli, and causing a pneumonia. And so the okay. viruses have a predilection for uh, reproducing in, in that part of us. Other, as I said, other viruses replicate elsewhere and cause different kinds of disease. That's just right. the way that they have evolved. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no why answer there. So why do coronaviruses infect? They just do other viruses infect. Whatever is available to a virus, there will be a virus that infects it. And so uh, in most individuals, it's important to understand that in 80% of the infections that we've seen so far, and this is a history based mainly on China, but also now more and more cases elsewhere, 80% of the infections are mild. You might, even, you might not even know that you're infected. You may think you have a sniffle or a cold or maybe a mild flu and just go about your normal life. And it is only in a, in a small fraction that it becomes more serious 
and in an even smaller fraction, it is fatal. And in those cases, the virus is getting deep into the lung and the infection causes an immune response, which we call inflammation. And that is designed, of course, to try and eliminate the virus from your lungs, but it also has the consequence of making you sicker. And for the coronaviruses, the epidemic ones, the SARS, the MERS, and the current one, SARS-CoV-2, a good part of the serious disease in people is caused by an over-exuberant immune response. You have uh, an immune response in your lungs, and that's contributing to it. It's not the case for all viruses, but certain ones we we, we lump together the effect of the virus on you, killing cells, but also your immune response, which is attempting to clear it, is actually doing some damage. We call that immunopathology, and it's very common in virus infect 